Okay, we're at Jim Lurkey's book signing, and joining us today is David Trice, who is a friend of Jim, I believe. So, mm -hmm. David, how do you know Jim? Oh, we go back a ways uh, to the point where he was our safety manager at uh, Randall Corporation. He would uh, subcontract out uh, all of that work uh, to him, and uh, he was really outstanding, really bringing uh, the people together, uh, his management uh, focus, his uh, leadership training, really took us from a point of um, uh, where we had a very high injury rate to uh, bringing that injury rate uh, way down. Um, what brings you to Jim's book signing, Choosing Success? Uh, we c go back a long ways, Jim and I, and I was actually one of them that said uh, with all the work that Jim has done with uh, the community and with mm -hmm. our companies and with all of the companies too, you know, what would you think about doing a book? And with the experience that he had, I said, Boy, if you could have something like this to uh, bring to the market with the, uh, the background that you have in safety and just really making people uh, a community and a workforce, it would really be a huge, I think, a, a huge thing for us. So that's really where uh, Jim and I got together and um, really came to uh, a great working relationship. Excellent. What does it mean to you choosing success? Uh, it's really the cornerstone of what we do uh, at my company, First Light Home Care. Uh, success is uh, dealing with people. Uh, success is making sure that uh, individuals are looked at, cared for in a way that um, you know, they're respected as individuals. And so in going forth, forward with, uh, with Jim, it's really uh, somebody that um, we know and respect and uh, can't wait to see what's inside the book. Okay, David, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, joining us now at Jim Lurkey's book signing is Billy Brown. Billy, welcome. Thank you. Okay. How do you know Jim? Um, I own an insurance agency down in Delafield, Wisconsin, and we uh, found Jim for doing, our, doing loss control for our, our larger clients, our businesses and um, contractors, per se. And um, we've uh, been friends uh, since, and uh, he's... he's very good at what he does, and we've continued a working relationship and a personal relationship. Okay. What brings you to his book signing today? Uh, I guess basically just to patronize Jim and uh, 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 just be here for an event that I think is uh, close to his heart. So, Supporting a good friend, that's the best to do. Correct. Okay. Um, lastly, what is it about choosing success that's important to you? Um, choosing success means being around successful people and surround myself with su successful people and motivated people. And um, I think that makes a world of difference. Thank you very much for joining us. Joining us now at Jim Lurkey's book signing, Choosing Success, is Tammy Lipsko. Tammy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Okay. How do you know Jim? It started about seven years ago. I became friends with Linda on a mission trip in New York, and through the years I made many, many visits to Linda and Jim's home, and a great friendship was formed. And about two years ago, he called me and said, Hey, Tammy, I got this great idea. You want to help me write a book? And I said, Absolutely. So for about a year and a half, we corresponded. Um, I took his vision and his motivation and just put my spin on it and um, even came and watched him work one day and taped his whole day. And then throughout the year and a half, we talked, we edited, we laughed about it. And it's nice to be here today to see it finally come to fruition. Excellent. So you made the trip all the way here today for Jim's book signing. Absolutely. Um, I would make the trip again. I've made the trip for his surprise party, for Linda's surprise party. Um, they're great people and very good to me and my family. Excellent. What does the subject choosing success mean, you know, when you were writing the book and helping him write the book? What does the subject actually mean to you and the way you would apply it? The way I would apply it is that choosing success is something that everybody does, not just Jim as a business person who comes across many entrepreneurs throughout his day, but choosing success is something that anyone can do, whether it's church, home, teacher, parent, and that's how I approached it, choosing success. Tammy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.
Joining us now is Camber Pazowitz. Camber, how do you know Jim? Um, last year I graduated from South High and they did a scholarship in memory of their three children and I was one of the students chosen and um, I don't know we just built a huge bond since that um, scholarship and they just adopted me into their family so wonderful uh, what brings you here today to the book signing um, Jim is a really important person in my life and I just wanted to be here for him and see like his success like in his book and um, just support him in everything he's doing. Okay. Camber, that's wonderful. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> that's Hello, everybody. If we are in uh, full Jim Lurkey mode, um, I'd like to begin by saying good afternoon. Life is all about choices, right or wrong. I'm honored to be here. I'm Dale Miller. I uh, have been a friend of Jim's for many years. Uh, actually, Jim and I were in the same class in high school. And I know Jim on a personal level. And I work at Oostburg Concrete. And Jim and Safety Connections um, are our safety consultants. So I've got to see uh, all sides of Jim over the years, and um, I'm proud to be able to stand in front of you and introduce him this afternoon. Um, for those of you who, who know Jim, you, uh, you understand that he is a man of, uh, of ideas. Ideas come to him very quickly. I think probably as many leave him have come to him. But, but he is also a, an action guy, you know, and that's a, that's a really interesting combination. Not only does he come up with ideas, but he finds a way to bring them to fruition. I think it's a unique quality. Um, for those of you who, and I suspect most of you know Jim pretty well, um, first of all, he is a, uh, he is a good man. He's a God-fearing man, he's an honest man, he's a kind and caring man, the kind of guy that would give you the shirt off his back. Secondly, professionally, he is, uh, it's hard not to admire his passion and his persistence and his willingness to help you whenever you need help. He relates very well to people, all types of employees, all types of management people, uh, a very, very uh, um, accomplished guy. I'm proud to have him as my friend. Um, speaking of choices, I think he made a good choice with his dear and lovely wife, Linda, who is here to share this milestone with him. Linda, I'm not so sure about your choice, but, <laughs> but, uh, but Jim made a good choice. So um, without further delay, um, Jim, we wish you great success with your book. And I am very pleased this afternoon to introduce to you the author of Choosing Success, Jim Lurkey. Thank you. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes, it's tough to talk. Today is probably that day. But I got to talk. I at least got to talk to share why today. First and foremost, it's about family and Mac. Son Rob, I think they just left, did they? Uh, Linda, as Dale pointed out, uh, came to bed to help with getting things to where they are. And it's friends. And it's family. And it's business people. And it's the chief himself. And a neighbor. 
Tamara, you are an incredible friend. What you have done, words can never describe. And I know Linda feels the same way. And I know you came a long way to get here to only go back to spend this time. And I want everyone to know, Tamara Remington was Detective of the Year, and I got chosen to announce Tamara. That was an honor, as it's an honor to have you with me today. Two of my partners, Don, one of the newest, in Continuum HR, she's a director. Two of the other partners, James with Dynamic, Scott with Environmental, Debbie with Seek, Mawick and Gaussman, Jeff and Jennifer, Dan, you've been like a lot of everything. And today is really, folks, because of Dan. I told Dan I wanted no part of this. And Dan said, people want a part of you. And I heard it over and over, and finally I got convinced. And the paper got involved, and got involved with public TV here in Dave, with Dave, and it goes on. But I look around. This is why I do what I do. It's you. Today was you. And now why? Well, you know now why today happened. And I guess rightfully so, Dan, I was wrong. I always want to think I'm doing things right, but you proved me wrong. So that's today. But why did the book ever start? Well, I got to tell you, folks, I have been sat down with and talked to and talked to about writing a book just to share something of you, Jim. Well, I know it was the fifth time. The fifth time, and we have a person sitting here, right there, Vi Miller. And uh, how many years is it, Vi? It was Nino's. And they were sitting across the table. It was Vi and Chris Meyer, and she had an emergency, and she still may be here. All right? As her husband would know about Chris. Uh, sometimes we'd get together, us three, and I think we were the three amigos, talking business and just talking life. And, and they looked at me about writing this book, and if I remembered correctly, Vi, I said, you guys are crazy. I'm not into this. Just, that's not me. And then came the next day. And I don't know if Betsy's here. I know she was going to be here. Betsy Alice, the director of the chamber. And I remembered that call. And she said, Jim, I need to do something for you. And her words were something to the effect, Jim, I'm sick of listening to people talk about you. I'm a writer. I want to write. And if it wasn't, probably for Chris and Vi, the day before, being pretty emphatic, and then the very next day, bang, I agreed to go ahead. But little did I know what I was in store for. Little did I know. The book, for those of you who may not know, was How to Overcome Tragedy. Because Jim Lurkey sure had his moments. One daughter, another daughter, I-43, and as this process didn't move along, being the kind of people we are, 
we had to meet. And when we met after like eight months, and it was a lot of work telling people about the Jim Lurkey story, when we decided we had to go our separate ways. Because it wasn't moving in a direction that it needed to move to get done. And it went to a friend. It didn't take long, though, with Kay Dean. <laughs> All right? It was like, no, this ain't for me. So that didn't take long. And then it was trying to find the next person I could really work with. And that happened. Tammy Lipscomb, the problem was, as close and all the trust and all the world in her, she lived in LaPorte, Indiana. And so there had to be a lot of things to happen to get it done. But she was willing and bound determined to do it. The time spent was humongous. I remember that day, eight hours, you got to listen to me, and I don't know what you thought on your way home, but eight hours nonstop of listening to Jim Lurkey and how to motivate people and get results. I can't even imagine, because I was doing it. But I know one thing. The book changed. The book on how dealing with the worst situations became dealing with choosing success. Helping leaders be leaders. And if I was to target anyone, I'll tell you one guy in the back right there, I can tell you, I can look at him from here, Andy Lancer, I know what kind of leader you can be. It was for people like that and you that's around me today, because anybody who don't believe in leadership, I'm telling you right now, I know you wouldn't be here because you've heard me enough. And Dale, you did a pretty good job explaining that. I still want things to be done and get results. So the book got to a point we got it finalized. But that wasn't it. It wasn't it at all. Because then came problems with the publishing. And this wasn't going to go, and that wasn't going to go, and then it wasn't going to be done the way I wanted to see it done. And finally, through church family, we found Gary and Kathy Ferguson. And I thank you both, and you, Gary. Because I can understand sometimes I hear the words, it's pretty brutal listening to you, Jim. Okay? Because he can be pretty demanding to get things done. As I got some idea. Tammy, you're laughing, but you know it's true. This is Tammy Lipscomb. Tammy, all right? She deserves a hand, I can tell you that. But I found out another thing about Tammy. We clicked. You know, you would think you'd have this face-to-face -face and some bad dialogue along the way. Not with her. We had a mindset that we could get this thing where we wanted it. And so it happened. But how did it happen? I'll tell you, none of this would have happened without people like you in this room. As I hear, it's a major part of my life. When someone says retire, Claude, you know what I got to say? <laughs> Thank you. Right now, I can't help it. That, it's me. As long as I can help someone and someone to be the best that they can be, that's what it's about. And if you can picture just going back, putting it together, because folks wanted to know about putting this thing together, think about all the pages and all the stuff there had to be. And then to dwindle, dwindle it down to a point where people can read it within like an hour, hour and 15 minutes. It needs to be a quick read. So now you're starting to do whatever you can. And it came to a point where we got it to this point. And this is the ultimate day. And is a day I'll cherish forever. Like I said, partners, business friends, people that allow me to help make a difference. Because you still make your own choices. 
Dale said it well. Dale said it well. Just think about choices, and we all have choices. And probably what I heard in my household was pretty accurate as well. When I was told, Jimmy, you're always helping somebody. You're always caring. And when it comes really down to why I wrote the book, I remember Betsy telling me from day one we sat down. She said, one thing I want you to know up front, you're going to learn something about yourself. I said, really? I don't know if she really knew what she was talking to. But I can tell you now that it's said and done. I did. Learn something good. I love to give back. I love to see people be as best they can be. But I also love to see results. I know. There's four people looking down. Steve Fisher being one. Oh, I heart to hearts. All the things he said to me is the same kinds of things I heard from people like you in the last two days. And it has been overwhelming. And it's been humbling. At times, some tears flowed. When I got this one message, and I had it all written down, and as some of you may know me, I just throw it away when it comes time to really speak. But Teresa said to me, Jim, you are one inspiration in life. The day you walked in our plant and the day you walked out, I just want you to personally know, besides wanting a buck, we have gone 2,722 days without an accident. That was choking for me. Another experience I had, and I know there's a couple of them here from Wilman, a foundry. I couldn't work with better owners. Gordy. Joining us now is Bell Boom fits right in that category. But I'm treated like family. They not only listen, because it is about choices. They made some choices. And I think along the way, they're the ones that made believers out of themselves for making it 200 days. And I tried checking around foundries, and I haven't heard a foundry who's done that. But they took the leadership and executed it. They allowed me to be this little part of their family. And I look around and see so many of the church family here. It's remarkable. Claude. Claude Kent, I want everyone to know I remember that one day when I don't refer a lot of people to a lot of places. You were my first referral. And I couldn't be more prouder of you. That you got that job. In the Jirashi. You are special people. In my life. Just who you are. And Gary and Kathy. I wouldn't want no one else. For no other reason, the example you set for everybody in this room. It would be easy to lay down and do nothing. No, but Exactly, because you want to be something. And to all the rest of you from Salem, I guess it would take me forever to get through all of you. But you are special. Pastor Jim. Dale. Remarkable to see you all. Courtney, my granddaughter, she is special. Mike and Kelly, 
Wiley, you are special to our family. Donna, I know how close you were with Jess. You will always be special. She's looking down. She sees us right now. Jen and Pat, you're our friends. Friends help friends. When I got down and out in the business, you were there at the beginning. I knew it wasn't going to fail, but because of people like you and the Dave Herbergs of the world and the Brian Myers and that list goes on. Dan Miske. Everybody in this room. Aurora being the new partner. Pam, you're awesome. John. I'm overwhelmed today. You should have had surgery, John. I'm humbled by that. Dan Goosen. Dan in the back helps with writing our weekly safety tip to make a difference in people's lives. He's here from Chippewa Falls. He is a special friend and man. And just to look around and see some of the things that have happened. I remember you, Carl, giving me a call to sit down. What a great guy you are. What a great leader. And I can look at John in the back. K.I., one of my absolute very first clients. To think someday I'd go corporate. To think someday that uh, in Green Bay had a pretty horrible record. And to think at last month's Results came out at 0 0.9, I think. <laughs> Keep striving to be the best we can be. Janet Scott, so awesome to be here. Clay, I mean, to think you folks, some of you folks have come here to drive two hours. Four hours round trip. I am humbled. Phyllis, I know you've come to a lot of different things, but to be here is special. Dale, doing what you did is special. Todd, you are special as a neighbor, as a friend, as a sheriff. And I will never tell you that I'll ever forget you sitting in the back of that church at that funeral for our son. And when we got the verdict, and Todd was right outside that courtroom to greet us and hold us. Linda Fisher, always there, always there for us. Brian, I'm proud to see you here. I'm proud to see your dad, but I'm more so proud to see you. Because that book is partly intended to you guys. You young people who can be the best you can be if you make it your choice. And I look around trying to at least thank as many of you as I can. Marty, Mr. Thompson, your special guy. Sharon, I'm surprised I don't come to the jail more just to say hi, because you and I can, we can make the world go wrong, I know that. Larry and Chris Schneider, as friends, you're awesome. Jim, uh, it's great people. I'm, uh, Charles, Thanks for having me a teammate of yours. Just so appreciated. And I go around to try to make sure I don't try to forget anyone. Al, 
Thank you for being here. I know you came at quite a distance. Uh, Don, one of our new partners, our church family. It's just so awesome to be part of my day. <coughs> Dave Trice, you're a special guy to me and a special friend. And we've gone through some tough business stuff. <coughs> Thank you for being here. Diana, we go back a long way. You're a special lady and a special friend. I'm glad we were able to stay in touch. Larry, Mr. Polinski, by the way, there's a new law. Can't help but do this. On uh, first aid requirements, uh, Larry was willing to bring that along. So anybody see him before you leave? If you want to know what that is, the guidelines. Julie and Bob, if for no other reason, you're special because, geez, Julie, you and Linda are really special to each other, I'll tell you that. Just, you're special. And Don, you're a guy that's always, like, stood by me. And doggone it, you are just a great guy, leader and friend. Tom from LTC. Really great to see you here. And then we got friends. Almost all at the same table. Kay and Ann and Dizzy and Mike. And Karen. Pat and Ken. Brian. David, Dan. We go back a long ways. And then there's Kyle. <coughs> Kyle, you are an example. And I am proud that you're here today. And in closing, I better tell you about the seven simple elements as it was put together. And then, thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Mike. And hope I didn't miss anyone. But the seven elements are based out of life. That's what I believe. As the, one of the very first persons that were here, I remember the first time when he asked me and I told him what they were, he said, where in the heck did you get it from? It's my belief. And I believe anyone can do it. If you truly have the energy, if you have the passion, and you want to be the best you can be. And those seven are simple. Seven chapters of starting with commitment. And then it goes to leading by example because I found out in life that talk is cheap. But doing what you say you're going to do, it's a whole new story. And if you can do those two things, then set your goals because you're more... It's, Chances are going to be pretty great that you can get there. And after that, look at process, because life is all about change. And you're looking at a guy that knows how bad things can be. And how ugly they can be with change. But we're only as good as we change. Processes. Status quo, don't do it. You've got to look to change, be able to change. And then it's communicating. I see this communication all over the board. I see the, the disrespect all over the board. I see how leaders lead all over the board. And I just put some things out there that are most simplistic to get you the best results that people can understand. And so some of that's going back to the basics. Because I know two things that people in life want. And that's treat me with respect and treat me fair. So you can use it at any aspect of your life. Why did the book choose safety? It's personal. His life is personal to me. Losing three kids and seeing what I see in I-43 and know how precious and how fast life can be taken. Enjoy the moment. 
as I close, I want you all to know I'm enjoying this moment with all of you. And whatever you do in life, whatever you do in life, remember the choices you make are your own. Make the right choices. Thanks so much. Shicker. Don, uh, how do you know Jim? I met Jim through uh, networking through LinkedIn. Uh, we happened to connect and meet, had a lot of common things in common, especially the HR perspective and safety. Um, I've helped him do a couple presentations and uh, I love his book. Okay. What brings you today to his book signing, Choosing Success? Uh, he explained a lot of his journey to me about the book, and um, like I said, I did see him do a couple presentations to groups, and I wanted to see how it all tied together. Um, plus, I'm very proud of his success, so um, the book to me is uh, personal and uh, business-related. Okay. What does the subject choosing success mean to you? Well, I think it means um, a lot of things. You can tie it to your personal life. You can tie it to your work-related life. And I think if you can combine both of those into that work-life balance, that's what makes you successful because it is your choices that, you know, guide you forward. Okay. Dawn, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. Me too. Sure. Joining us now is Don Merceberger. And Don, how do you know Jim? Jim and I go back quite a ways. Uh, he asked me to work for him at one time. And I wasn't ready to move from the present job that I was at. And uh, I said to Jim, I said, when I'm ready to retire, I said, then you and I can rub shoulders and we'll see what we can do together. Okay. So Did that happen so far? I have two years to go. Two years uh, to go? Two years from this month is my retirement date that I have set so far, anyhow. Okay. So, okay. good Lord willing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what brings you today to Jim's book signing? Uh, Jim and I... I kind of feel we're out of the same mold. Um, my real feelings, and it's, I feel that's the way Jim operates too, is that everybody has the head knowledge in safety, but it doesn't really work until you move it to your heart and live it. And Jim is that way. You can hear it whenever he talks. It's, everybody's almost like they're his brother or family, and he maybe never even knows them from who they would be, but... That's the way Jim comes across, and I, I teach the same way. I think you just answered my last question, but I'll ask it again anyway. What does the subject choosing success mean to you? Success can go many different ways, but as long as you're healthy, happy, and you have family around you to support you, that's success. I don't think it could be put any better than that. Don, I want to thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Jim. <laughs>